There we go. Right. So a happy Thursday evening to everyone. It's all good to see you once again. Um, yeah, we didn't see each other last week, and and after my 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 little apology regarding us not uh, being able to meet, I had a string of lamentations. <laughs> but uh, sometimes it just gets too hectic um, on all fronts, and and last week I wasn't too well as well, so we couldn't really meet. So, but thanks for joining us this afternoon. Uh, today we have a very uh, energetic and an exciting guest. Um, <laughs> he doesn't. Uh, he doesn't. Is that is that is that is that part of our group? So I am actually invited, especially. Uh, for today, because I just feel we need a bit of a, um, um, I'd say a, a, what's it, a shaking of the legs. Um, so, so I think I think we'll enjoy him as much as I do. Uh, but I'll do the intro a bit later, uh, while uh, before before he takes the floor. But 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 whilst we do that, is there anyone who has uh, a piece of gratitude that they'd like to share with the rest of us? Oisman. You're very high energy um, uh, functioning these days. Do you want to to come yeah. through and share with us a bit of gratitude? <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Hi. Everyone. Hi. You put me on the spot, Vincent, and you got me at the worst moment ever. Today, I'm actually tired. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe it's time that you center yourself and uh, think about one of the things that uh, you know you're grateful for today. Particularly, would probably help you energize or re-energize. Uh, no, please pass. <laughs> <laughs> wow, even that bad. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, guys, okay. it's that bad. If, if maybe, if, maybe what I can tell you, um, yeah. um, I'm actually I'm in North Beach. I'm not at home. Right. So that's how much I needed air. You know, uh, you know, Vincent. The guys that are working at home, they are not finishing, and I'm a bit, you know. So yeah, guys, I'm. I'm a bit frustrated, so please um, let's carry on with the evening, and then I'm gonna um, actually get some energy out of the discussions, basically. So I'm hoping right. to leave uh, the chat feeling much better, you know. Okay, so that 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 that's a positive thing. I mean, you've just shared with us that when you're frustrated, you want to connect to the future with the rest of us. That's beautiful. That that on its own, I think, is something to. To, to feel energetic about. But yeah, no, thanks for that, Wise, and don't worry, good things uh, take time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Good yeah, things well, take time. That makes me yeah. feel better as well. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Okay, great. So um, I'm going to shoot straight into the introduction and then we can let um, uh, Joe take, take the floor. So I met Joe many, many, many moons ago. I don't know if I met Joe at the gym, I can't remember. But uh, Joe and I lived around uh, the same area, I think. I don't know if we actually did realize that we lived around the same area before we met or after we met, I'm not sure. But uh, when, we, when we met, we immediately connected and uh, we had lots to say to each other. And I was a young boy then. I was probably, it was probably six, seven years ago. I can't remember, but I was, I was fairly yeah. young. And uh, um, uh, yeah, we used to meet and, and, and talk. Uh, if anyone has seen the documentary called Zyga, uh, which is like the debunking of all sorts of, you know, social ideas that, you know, we've come to believe as adults. And our conversation started there. And I used to spend a lot of time in his house as well, discussing all of these things. But ever since he's been doing amazing work. I mean, he has uh, been speaking on international news platforms. Um, he's been uh, doing a lot of writing. Um, he actually has um, um, a website called uh, Beyond the, the News Network, which is, I've never seen so many articles <laughs> in my life. <laughs> it's, like, it's like an encyclopedia uh, of 
full of content organized by subjects of interest. It really is like entering a library. And uh, you can see that the man is hard at work and, um, and, and sharing with us all that which he goes around the world uh, collecting understanding and brings it to us in, in a curated form such that we can enjoy it. Now, now a lot of people will, will, will probably, you know, listen to uh, alternative views um, as we have come to be accustomed and say, oh no, it's conspiracy, right? And, 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 and now and again, you do get a lot of that uh, kind of stuff, which is, is, is associated, you know, with the, a, a derogatory sort of fit to say, now don't talk to me about that. It's not the mainstream stuff. You know, it's not what CNN is saying. It's not what BBC is saying, you know, but, but certainly, you know, people like Joe spend a lot of time researching their content. They spend a lot of time going through uh, the sense making of the things that, you know, they, they share with, with, with the people they interact with. Uh, so it, I'm so excited and, and, and I hope you, you, you also uh, find, you know, uh, him as excited as I, as I, as exciting as I do. And uh, everyone, if you could just please welcome Joe. And uh, he's going to be chatting to us today about uh, the future of currency and, and uh, the, the financial system uh, that currently governs our world. So yeah, Joe, uh, please uh, take us through. Sure. <clears throat> good evening, everyone. Um, uh, it's good to be here. Uh, <laughs> I think it's, it's much easier um, to have a conversation where I don't look like I'm a preacher in the church, where I just tell people and then I expect an amen and then we go home. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, we, 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 it, it, I think, I think you're right. The time we met, um, I had just maybe had two or three years uh, after enrolling the geopolitical studies, um, I was mentored by a guy that back in 1971-72, he was uh, in his youth, he was uh, a leading member of an organization in Afghanistan called the Taliban. <laughs> so, <laughs> so he then took part in the resistance of the Soviet Union uh, around 1978-1979 when Russia decided to pick up and leave um, uh, the lower, it's, it's, it's lower Asia. Remember, the Eastern Bloc, we call it Eurasia. Yeah. So it's Europe uh, together with Asia, rounded up together as, as called Eurasia. So he, he started being active back in those days, until we go to uh, um, work for the Saudi family as a geopolitical advisor. And he traveled uh, and he ended up in South Africa and now he's back uh, there. So I benefited a lot from uh, such people. He connected me to almost any other person that I wanted to speak to across um, Antarctic or Indian Ocean or Mediterranean or Suez Canal, wherever. So, but one of the most interesting um, guys that I found to be very remarkable is a guy from an organization called Global Research. Uh, his name is William Enders. Um, he works with a group of retired um, writers and former uh, researchers, professors, and one of the people that uh, did a collaboration with them, his name is Pepe Escobar. Pepe Escobar, P-E-P-E -E Escobar. Uh, he wrote a, a book called The Empire of Chaos. Um, there's a young man who is based in New York. His name is Eric Dreitzer. He has a website called um, stop imperialism. So these are the people that are found to be jacked up on how the world works. And you started to see what you are told versus what is happening 
Um, hence, myself and Professor and a few other guys, we named our, our, our news outlet called Behind the News. So we, we call it Behind the News for the reason that what, what is it that makes the news? What is behind that statement that they are making? What is it that they're not telling you? Because we are, we are programmed, we are trained that whenever we have a conversation, I must listen to what Vincent is saying. I have now been trained to listen to what Vincent is not telling me to be able to make uh, sense. When CNN is showing you Black Lives Matter, what is it that CNN is not telling you when they're telling you that? And then when you look at uh, BBC, on the other hand, while they're playing a certain documentary, during that uh, a time, what is it that we were supposed to be made aware of that were not made aware of? I'll just give a perfect example that all of us are well aware of, World Cup. You need to know, notice that every four years, there's an, an event called the World Cup. Who are the chief custodians of that World Cup? The Rothschild family, uh, the custodians of the, the, the event called um, World Cup. Every four years, the systems of the world are changed. Pricing of the food, the formulas, uh, the, the coding of the aeroplanes, the radars, the cars, uh, the education system. Every single four years, it's being done. But for them to make sure that we are not paying attention to that, we are given events. Remember, uh, the Roman Empire, who built that uh, stadium, he said, just give them the event, they're not going to revolt. They are still using the same script that they use today. For example, if I were to ask you, why would a boy who just kicked a ball and get paid billions, meanwhile, soccer, we've just learned that there's a world called essential in this time. Football is not essential. But why are these guys paying so much money? Where is that money generated from? Where is this money going? Who is banking the money? Are we questioning where is the money being kept for these guys to push whose agenda? You know, so these are some of the things that our people are kept in the dark, they don't understand. Then you move from there, then the system will create a thing called racism. A racism was created. Racism is for poor people, you need to understand. Because the higher you go in the hierarchy, you, you, this, the rich people don't see color. The elite don't have a color. They have principles and the money because their God is money. They have ways in which they operate. But the guys at the lower level, for example, look at your, your Black Lives Matter. What is Soros doing there? He's putting money there to collapse the country and using racism. So racism is a tool for the elite to divide and control the population. Make white people so guilty, make black people angry and let them sort themselves out. Let it sort itself out. So these are the things that we are not learning because platform like this one that you guys created is not given, it's not given an opportunity because it's not in the mainstream. Who is mainstream? What is mainstream? What is the agenda? How are they fulfilling their goals in, in making sure that the amount of lies that they spread around is to keep us away from questioning and knowing the truth? So that's the essence of how the world is, is divided and how the world works. Now, if we were to now move to the next level, uh, there's currently four wars that are happening, um, Vincent. War number one, it's U.S. versus China. War number two, U.S. versus Russia. War number three is the currency war. We'll touch on that. It's the currency wars. Have you ever asked yourself a question why all of a sudden the dollar is the most superior 
currency in the world. Why everything is being weighed against the dollar? We're not questioning. We are just in the system. We continue to live and say, no, 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 this is worth 3 billion US dollars. Who programmed us to worship the dollar? How did we reach to that level where the dollar becomes king? Now, war number four, this is the most interesting part because everything we'll discuss and everything that is happening, it's based on the Rockefellers versus the Rothschilds. Now, just to dig a little bit on the war A, uh, we, we, if, if, if you have questions, please stop me. Don't let me uh, um, speak like a preacher in church. Please stop me and then <laughs> we, we, can, we can touch on it. Now, let's look at this China versus USA. But 40% of American economy is generated where? In China. How did that happen? How did, how did US find itself in that awkward position? What is it that now America needs to get back? Trump came in, he said, America first. And, and how did Trump come to power? Because all the presidents of US are selected. Who selects the Electoral College? Or who, who, who is the person behind? The Rockefellers took over from the Rothschilds in America. They said, never again. We shall not have any president that comes from the Rothschilds. Obama was a perfect example because half of Obama was Rockefeller, half of Obama was the Rothschild. What will happen now to Obama? He is going to go down. Why? Because he double crossed his master, being the Rockefellers. He sided with London. So that forms part of understanding US alone. You can divide US into pieces and start to understand that um, the American economy is controlled from New York and London. London being currently the headquarters of the Rothschild family. Now, we move to US versus Russia. This is what happens. In 2016, December, Vincent, if you remember, Henry Kissinger was 93 or 94. They pulled him out of retirement to go to Moscow and have a conversation with Putin to say, Putin, you have two wars that you are fighting. You are fighting London, you are fighting us in Washington. Now, your enemy's enemy will have to be our friend. So you have to be our friend against London. Whatever that we do now, let's cut the deal. Now, I want you, Vincent, to note how did that deal impact on South Africa? I will explain that part. So Putin had a deal with US. We will hold our war. We will make sure that we fight London. Now you started seeing which, any, which other president of US where has arrested pedophiles? <laughs> which other president? And if you look at the Epstein, Epstein is more of a Mossad agent. Israel being created by the Rothschilds family. So now it tells you the whole entire democratic, demonic uh, organization that subscribe to the Rothschild, Jacob and Evelyn Rothschild, are the current uh, 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 warlords or the landlords of the Democratic Party. The, Roth the Rockefellers still have a portion of the people who still subscribe to America, but majority of those people, even their banking system, it's now part of London. Uh, yeah. So mm. that you see there, it's something that we'll explain further when we get to. Rothschild versus the Rockefeller. But America on its own, it's at war with itself. The, uh, the Black Lives Matter protesters are undermining the COVID-19 Rockefeller project to say, we know what you are doing. We will spoil the party. We will make sure that this hoax that you're trying to create, these are the things that we're going to do. 
So it's the war between the two families at the expense of the people. The, 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 we are now told, oh no, someone, we were told that the dollar is king. How many people try to take down the king, the dollar? Perfect example. Two most famous men never made it. Yeah. Two. But now, one, it was Saddam Hussein, who was turning his back on Washington, now focusing in London. He wanted to use the London currency. He was out. Gaddafi, Chad, is mm. out. Let's not forget, J.F. Kennedy was taken out because of the currency wars. It, J.F. Kennedy wanted to make the American government to be in charge of the Central Bank of America, not American Central Bank that would be controlled from London. He was taken out. Come back to South Africa, Fervood. Fervood was saying, South Africa for Af South Africa for South Africans. We cannot have London controlling. Remember, we used to call the rent the pound. The pound. And then yep. the rent. Mm. So that cost him his life. So when it comes to the current now, the two families, as we are rolling down, the two families are now the only two families that are standing that are controlling the currency. In 1973, Henry Kissinger said, who do I call when I want to speak to Europe? The first thing that happened was, okay, these guys are trying to group Europe now because it's gonna go to one currency in Europe. Now, the, there's a currency that they want for South and North America will be called Amero. Yep. It's coming. Now, look at the two main, Europe and America. But in Europe, they were successful. When the Rockefellers pushed for a Euro, what did the Rothschilds do? Refused, they said never. Never. We will agree in everything. We will keep our pound. <laughs> you see. So they knew. So now this is the story. Now for 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 the Rockefellers to have a full control, for the Rothschilds to have a full control, they need to select presidents of each of those countries and the European Commission. That needs to be controlled somewhere. Now the Americans have more power in controlling the European Commission because the Rockefellers present. And you know what the Rockefellers did? They created the boogeyman. Who is the boogeyman? The NATO. Mm. What is the real reason for uh, 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 the American ex extension? That's an American arm in Europe. Why do you have an American military base in Germany? In Germany, yeah. Germany, it's a, it's a sovereign state on its own. Why do you have Americans have 1,283 uh, uh, bases around the world? Russia has, has only, they only have three. And of which two of them are in one country, in Syria. So this is the issue. Now, so for America to be able financially to control Group Europe, Henry Kissinger hinted. That was the first hit, hint that Kissinger said. If I want to call, if I want to speak to Europe, who do I call? Then group them. In Britain Wood 1974, they finalized that, okay, we're gonna have to have a current, we're gonna have to have a full control of this. Then the decisions that were made, the Rothschilds also came back to want their presence to be felt because originally they're from Europe. So then the two families continue with the struggle of wanting to control the whole thing. So the Rockefellers became very strong in oil. Why, Vincent? Why the Rockefellers focusing on oil? 
Tell me, Vincent. No, 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 carry on, carry on, Joe. <laughs> um, who is the biggest oil consumer in the world? American Navy. Yeah. So why? Because they need the engines running. If they are directed, like as we speak, all the 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 the, the, the fighter jets and all these aircraft carriers are yeah. downing to Venezuela. Why Venezuela? Venezuela in South America, in Latin America, they have the biggest uh, uh, oil reserves. So Middle East is being blown up. The war is not being won. The biggest thing that they wanted with oil, it's a, th it's a place called Golan Heights. Why is Netanyahu now in trouble? Why are people protesting against him? Why is Netanyahu going through to court? Simply because he failed to execute the mandate. You, you in, invade Syria, collapse Syria, we take Golem Heart, it, it's the richest with oil. And it's not happening. So now, within Syria, the, oh, the, the fight for oil. Now we have players like Rupert Madoc, Jacob Rothschild, Dick Cheney, the Bush family. Now we have the combination of the Rockefellers and the Rothschilds fighting there at the same time. For a simple reason, it's the control. There's no real reason why there's a fight in Syria besides of its natural resources. Same script that they did with Iraq, same script in Libya, same script uh, in Syria. Now, the focus is on Iran and Venezuela. And these are the countries that you'll find that for the, for the Rothschilds benefit, these countries don't have a central bank that is controlled by them. So, you call, so this is how they used to do. The Americans will say, we will collapse a country, we'll hold on to oil, then the London will come and say, I'm gonna hold on to the central bank. This is how they used to share. So you, you will now ask, how did the deal between US and Russia uh, affected events in South Africa? It affected events in South Africa because we had people who were burning schools in a place called Guan. Do you remember that those events? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Almost every week, there were schools that were banned. Who were those? It was CIA. CIA was given a mandate, make the South African government ungovernable until the people will see Zuma as a traitor, until Zuma is a liability, until people think Zuma is useless. So when Kissinger went to Moscow, immediately, immediately, that had to stop because uh, the CIA was then working together with London. But the day when they decided to turn against London, then the CIA started working for the South African government at the same time. So these are the events that were happening that you wouldn't see them in the mainstream media. It's things that you wouldn't know. You can read papers, but you're not gonna find it until the actual players that are on the ground that will tell you. So this all forms part of the four walls that we spoke about. We need to go back and deal on the current side and deal after all of this, where are we going? What, what, what is the future? What is the way forward? Now we have learned so many things during this um, 115 days that was planned four or five years ago. For the first time, Vincent, the, the DBS pegged in January, February, sold their businesses and left South Africa. Part of the reasons why they wanted their own airport within the airport, what is it that they took out? What is it that they bring in? Immediately when they finished selling their assets, what happened? COVID-19 came, a lot of businesses collapsed. The very same people that were sitting when this whole thing was planned, they came back to say they're giving you money to sustain your businesses, knowing exactly that the whole entire agenda is to collapse small businesses because the, the, the whole aim of the new world order is to remain with 100 companies globally that will control all these smaller companies. That's the end game. 
So we need to now look at all the currencies that are at play. What makes a currency like uh, your Zim dollar so weak? What makes, uh, uh, um, how, how does bank make, banks make money? How does, what is the role of, of, of Reserve Bank? What is the role of central banks? Uh, are these things taught at schools? Can you find this information anywhere? Is the government make, doing enough to educate people on these things? No, because these are the things that people are not supposed to know. Because if people find out that the banks actually don't have money, they, they create money out of thin air and then they live on interest. And should people find out that if all of us can pay off our loans, then the banks will collapse because they won't have anything to live on. Remember, this came, came with uh, Henry Ford when he said, no, take a car and pay tomorrow. Then they charge you interest. It was the systems that they created. So are we in the position of understanding as ordinary people what is actually happening? What is the future? We're going for a, a digital currency. In China, they've started piloting this. In December, when I was there, I could see that cash is no more in, 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 in exchange. They're going for digital currency. Some, some of the European countries, they have gone straight to the microchip. What is it? What are smaller countries like South Africa need to do? What are the things that we need to do? How do we have a control? This is where, this is the time where you start to understand that all the people that you so-called politicians are not real politicians. They've been placed there to push the agenda. I'm not going to use the other word I use. <laughs> so this, 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 these are some of the things that we are not in position of understanding. And most of the people who are so-called educated, this is the time now we have realized that the so-called education doesn't really exist because now we are told that you must sit at home because your job is not so essential. <laughs> a pilot, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know, Vincent, we grew up in the townships, a guy that is a pilot will worship that guy. But yeah, now we, yeah. will sit, we will sit with that pilot in the corner, smoke with him, do everything with him because he's not essential. The security guard that we will have in there is earning 1.5 a month. But, but that individual, he is essential. He is in a position of waking up in the morning and go to work. So, oh, oh, oh. And, and how it happened, you need to look at this. In January, February, the, the Bilderberg meeting. In March, it happened. What were they waiting for? There are so many questions that you can you can ask, and and how you see government officials. Look at look at your your your, your full cabinet. How many people in parliament, and how many people are active now? It's probably the minister of police, the minister of um, health. There's about. A, a, a department, a non-essential. So basically, everything is 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 not as what we were, we were taught it will be. But do we have a platform to question these things, Vincent? Can we yeah. question this? We yeah. don't question these things. We just carry on. I mean, some people, the dreams, the cars, dealers, almost everything has become irrelevant today. So in a short space of time, everything else changed. But the end game, the end game is to make sure that the elite remain in control of the currency, remain in control of the business, remain in control of the food. The next thing that is coming, we're gonna have um, food shortages. There's only seven countries that have surplus of food in the world. Other than that, we don't have they will tell you that we have uh, water shortages. These are all the things that are to come. I told people in 2017, I said, if you have not 
bought a house, wait. If you have not, don't buy anything new. Don't go on debt. Don't do this because we are heading for a disaster. And you don't understand how all of a sudden you are told that you are bankrupt. What systems are there? Are the, is the public understanding how the government can be bankrupt, except for the corruption that is happening? So these are all the systems, and these systems are everywhere around the world. They can tell you that they have the cleanest audit. Who's doing the audit? Yeah. Have you ever seen the Rothschilds in, in any financial magazines? You're not going to see them. They own uh, Forbes magazine to make sure that whoever they want as their puppet, like Warren Buffett, he's a, he's a, he's a, um, what, what, what's this? He's a, he's a, he's a New York. He's a New York boy. Bill Gates is a New York boy. Those, are, those guys are employees. That's why they're instructed to flaunt the wealth so they can attract more people to join those cycles. The real people with money, you're not going to see them anyway. They make sure it's kept under it. They don't tell you that their main central banking is in Vatican. They're not going to tell you that. So these are some of the things that it, 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 such conversations like we're having now are discouraged from the people. Like what you, Vincent, that um, when people will cause, it, 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 they will tell you that, no, this is just conspiracy theory. Yeah. Without yeah. understanding how that word came about. Remember, that's mm. a CIA fabricated word. <laughs> when yeah. people without discussing the issues on how J.F. Kennedy was killed. They said, yeah. no, if you come up with this word, then nothing will happen. So the moment you talk about the new world order, the, me and you, we've been talking about this, Vincent, for many years. When yeah. The, the yeah. moment you talk, someone will come and say, ah, you guys are conspiracy theories. We're not going to have this. So <laughs> it, it, it becomes a challenge for our people to start absorbing the information and understanding. So I see someone wrote something to say, uh, due to lack of uh, economical in inactivity, there would be lack of, it, it, it is, it's a fact. It's a fact. So it's all planned. This is stage one, this is stage two. We're still going to head for a financial collapse. That will do worse than 2008. Mm. It, 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 it's, it's, there's no way that this whole plan can go without collapsing the finance. It, it will have to happen. It will have to get to a point where people need to understand what we are up against. It's not just going to happen in any way. We are not at liberty of just doing as we please or just buying cars. No, things are going to change. Things are going to get to a point where we will reach a point of no return in a short space of time because mm. there's so many things that are going to collapse. Big businesses are going to collapse. People are going to be in the streets. People are going to revolt. Though an instruction came from London and New York to say, look at the population, do the numbers, we will make this amount of money available so they don't revolt. But for how long are you going to sustain people with the grant? You can't. It's not sustainable. People will need work. People will need education. People will need to, to, to plow their own food. People will need to, people will, will need to have activities. All these infra infrastructures that were built, all of them are white elephants currently, simply because we, we are not active. So a lot of questions we're getting. Who are the people that are essential? Who decides what is essential and what is not essential? Where does the money go? Who does it benefit? Now, if these guys decide no, uh, farm workers will have to work. But bottom line is, who benefits? Who makes that money? We need to ask those questions. And now, the, another thing would be, why are our government are silent about these things? Mm, mm. Now, the simple answer is, the government people are in the payroll of the elite. How come, uh, Vincent, you had one minister serving about five presidents in one position as a minister of finance? Mm. And one, what makes a, every minister of finance around the world, all of them will go to London. 
because the central banks are owned in London. Malusi was the first guy that he was appointed. He went to Washington, D.C. He didn't go to London. Why? It was immediately after the deal between Russia and America was done. So the fight between the Rothschild and Rockefellers, they took it to our shores where we became casualty. And it was too late for the Rothschilds, for the Rockefellers to fight Zuma wars because the Rothschilds were way ahead because they had money. Same thing that I'm saying, Tokyo confirmed it, to say a lot of votes were bought. So what these guys do, they go around the world. They make sure that all the ruling parties of the world, Vincent, have to collapse. It's only two countries in the world where the ruling parties have power. It's China and Russia. And Russia, yeah. Is there a standing ruling party in Germany? No, they're in the collusion government. Uh, is, 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 the, is the ruling party in London in a strong position? It was a narrow margin. Is America the Republicans or the Democrats? No one knows. So if you look at the big players, all these big political parties that were supposed to usher a way forward for the people are being dismantled and people are being placed into position to make sure that going forward, no one controls with collision governments. What they were yeah. doing in Germany was piloting, taking a huge gamble in a very strong country like uh, Germany in Europe. So this is the reason why the likes of China realized to say, okay, before, 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 before I miss this point, China has a boss who is controlling the financial systems of China, London. Shanghai being the city of finance for China is controlled in London. Though the relationship is collapsing because China is now gaining momentum. But what China did, they went to London to ask for permission. Can we go to all the countries that we have colonized and set up? Jamaica, South Africa, Zim, Zambia, Ghana, Nigeria, Uganda, Kenya, so Caribbean islands, where London was, they've given the Chinese a platform to come and play because the Rothschilds funded and founded the CCP of China. Mm. Mm. As, as long as that debt is still on, London will always have a say. That is why when we are a backless uh, uh, card carrying customer, when you are withdrawing in China, your charges are not as bad as you're using Standard Bank. Standard Bank being the American bank owned and controlled by the Rockefellers. Mm -hmm. So in South Africa, it's only Standard Bank and Dynast Club and Discovery that is controlled by the Rockefellers. Net Bank, APSA, and um, FNB are now controlled by the Rothschild. So these are the systems that were created many years ago. Now, Cyril came at the time where they had planned that he must come for one thing, make sure you carry out the mandate of what we want. And he is executing, let me tell you, out of all the presidents of the world, Cyril was the first guy that I saw who followed the script of the people that sent him what to do. He's doing exactly what he's been told. He's not even shy, he's not even apologetic, he's following the orders. He's very clear what he wants. The, the energy, the finance, the tenders, almost everything that is there. If you look across and look into the future, as a businessman, anywhere in the world, what do you see? Nothing. Unless if someone said, no, my future looks bright, so you must tell us, what is it that is so essential that you're doing that will make you, because all these businesses will narrow down to one pyramid where one way or the other, the business will be controlled from one place because the end game is to group things. How did South Africa allow business to group companies? Perfect example. I'm just giving you a, a, a small 
example of what they are about to do. All the smaller businesses that you have will be swallowed or be bought by the big hundred. All these cars, you left GM, you left, all of them will find themselves in one position where they will be controlled under one umbrella, as Bid Vest is doing, as Imperial Group is doing, all of them Zionist owned companies. So this is how things are going to happen going forward. Sport is, is the sport has changed. Things are not going to be the same. Media is not going to be the same. Entertainment business, I have conversations with those guys. I said, think of something else. Entertainment is not in, essential. It's not essential. Do other things. You need to find yourself in positions where you will do things that matter. So these are the things that we are still going to witness a lot. We are still going to, the protests are still coming. But you must remember, when people are revolting, when people are protesting in the city where I am, people jump into the government building, burn all the cars, burn all the buildings. Why? Because people are hungry. But guess what? Somebody within had to benefit from that. So that had to happen for something else to happen. It, it, it can't just be ordinary people. They were infiltrated. They were pumped up, they were given the tools, they were told, this is what yeah. you must do. Yeah. So this is, this is where we are finding ourselves um, at, at this current time. But the, the kind of news that you are getting every day are not the news that you should be getting. This is the kind of news that just to keep you going, they give you hope, you know? The biggest thing that you can sell to a man is a hope. Nothing else. You must just give people hope and then they carry on with that. This COVID story, it, 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 nobody knows exactly what is happening. The people that know exactly what is happening, they're not saying anything. So whenever the minister or anybody, even, even, even uh, the World Health Organization, whenever they speak, Vincent, listen to what they're not telling you. Remember when it started, they said, no, there's no need for you to wear a mask if you're not sick. 24 hours later, no, you must wear a mask. Dr. Fucho on the other side, he said, no, when you wear a mask, it can cover a small droplet, but it, it doesn't really matter. Last week, he came wearing a huge mask. It even covered his face. So now, you, 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 you and now, all, let, 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 let's be frank. All the people that have gone to sleep now were not sanitizing. They were not, they were not eating well. If they were not wearing masks, they still die anyway. So, but are, are we questioning? We're not questioning. Mm -hmm. Why are we not mm -hmm. questioning? Is the food we eat, is the water we drink, is the, is the lifestyle we live? Is the, it's all the things that have been put before us to see that this is how it should go. This is what they do when the baby is born, uh, Vincent. Um, whenever a child grows up, when they start programming, they teach them colors. They said, this is yellow, this is pink, this is green. The moment that child starts to recognize the colors, it's a confirmation that, okay, here's another machine, Here's another government property that we will use in the future. That's it. Because once you start to comprehend what the world is telling you, you're not going to question. Yeah. You just, you're just going to have to go with the flow as we are doing now. So there will be too many things that are going to happen. You'll see protests. You'll see blocking of the freeways. You will see a lot of things. The weather patterns are going to change. The traveling arrangements are going to change. Economically, we're still going to collapse even further down. More people are still going to die. Many things are still, we're still going to have a shortage of medicines until the bigger fulfillment of the vaccines become the solution. Imagine, we are approximately 10 billion people in the world, so they say, if you want to get the job, of vaccinating each of those people at 300 rands a vaccine, Vincent, how much money would you make? 
Yeah. So, yeah. so the end game is there, mainly for control, financially, mainly for control, food-wise, oil, and all the industries need to be grouped and be controlled in the same place. Because we are going to get to a point where we have to accept. Remember what um, um, uh, David Rockefeller said, we are waiting for major, one major crisis that will happen so that the people can accept new world order fully. We must create crisis and never let the crisis go to waste. This is what's happening. <laughs> wow, Joe. <laughs> Um, it's, it's, it's certainly certainly been a while since uh, I've spent time with you, and you, you don't know how hard it is to sit and just listen when when all of these things that you know is being spoken about are are right there, you know, in the in the essence of what you know drives one's thinking and perception to things and so on. But I mean, I'm not going to I'm not going to um, talk talk much. Um, Bali, you wanted to say some stuff. You've been writing away here. You want to share your views quickly. <laughs> Look, man, I feel like I was in my international relations lecture, but yeah. on a different level. Yeah. Um, so I've just started international relations. And with everything that is happening, it actually made me realize that it was such a perfect time for me to choose the course because um, you know, I had been doing my own little research way back when, and, and like I said in one of my comments, um, aligning with people like Joe that have this kind of information. And I yeah. think that's where my interest sparked. And watching all of this unfold, really, like it put, Joe, you've just like stamped the nail. You've put me into complete depression. And it's not that I didn't know all of this was happening, but geez, man, your passion. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm just sitting here, I'm like, there is no way out. There yeah. really isn't. And this is the scary part. But I think for me, the scariest part is the people there at the ground level who are not aware at all. They yeah. have no clue what is coming. And I have no idea how they are actually going to survive. I mean, we know, but we're also like, there, there are actually no solutions. And what COVID-19 literally did was make us realize as black people that there actually is no black economy, none. Oh, yes. And we are unable to build it worse even now. There, I'm just, I need a drink. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know, you know, you know, you know. The, w one of the most difficult um, things to to do uh, on Earth, just generally. I'm not talking now. I'm not talking last five years. I'm just talking forever. Uh, it, as, I mean, for as long as I've been a man, um, it's been so difficult to cultivate an alternate form of conversation with people you meet, right? Mm -hmm. uh, at, at any one time. You, you meet someone that you only get resonance when whatever that it is that you're saying is something that they would have learned in school or something that they would have heard the previous night on TV or something that they would have read on the newspaper. The minute you start mm -hmm. providing an alternative view through means of questioning and through means of using same logical principles to construct an alternative view of thinking, it completely goes you know, pear-shaped and you, you aren't able to sustain a discussion and that is why it becomes um, it becomes a, a crisis um, um, to get people into uh, real thinking, into alternative thinking, into non-mainstream thinking. People would rather much, you know, switch on the television and hear whatever they want to hear, and then they go away. And 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 you know, what 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 for me was 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 glaring, um, which I still can't believe people haven't picked up on it, is how the response of all governments regarding COVID is pretty much the same. It's copy paste, book standard. Whether whether you have numbers shooting upwards, <laughs> I laughed at some point when Zimbabwe had one case. <laughs> 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 Why is 
Bilbao. 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 Uh, part of the terms and conditions of IMF during this time, the, things were altered to say, if you have this much of cases, we're going to give you money to rebuild the economy. Yeah. It means we're going to lock down longer. Yeah. You understand? So if, if it's going to happen like that, so sometimes figures were inflated. Sometimes uh, 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 Zim had one case, they locked down. And you ask yourself, okay, what are you locking down, basically? No. Why don't you lock that one guy that you have a case for? You know, because you only have one case. If one guy, and, and, you can lock in his room. You know, and some guys in Cameroon, um, they were interviewed. So they said, no, um, what, what do you feel of the COVID-19 in Cameroon? And one guy said, no. Well, four people, well, four cases. Uh, but for us to continue, let's just shoot those four people in the <laughs> I remember, I remember you, so, you, had, an you, you had an interview with uh, Joe Noro on SABC where those things started coming up. And I saw you were behaving there because uh, I think, yeah, you're at SABC and you <laughs> could implicate your no. brother. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I was attacked by um, the health ministry. They uh, said to me, you know, I embarrassed them. Um, because I said that China had cases. And though they delayed, remember, China got the first case in the 16th of October, 2019. Yeah. But because they knew it was festive period, they needed to generate a revenue for the Western countries. So because of the so-called Christmas, people were flocking to China to buy the goods. Like African people were buying a lot of goods out of China because in December, people get bonuses, so they buy more. So China calculated that very well. They started announcing this in Jan when they knew that everyone else is gone. So they have nothing to lose. Then we can lock the country. It was well calculated. So I said, I remember it was on the 15th of March. I had returned from China on the last day of December. And the people were still flogging in and out of, 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 of China and South Africa. And I said, these guys are not saying anything to us besides telling us that don't shake hands anymore, wash your hands. While other countries are blocking people from coming in. So, are they meeting in parliament to tell us how we should wash our hands or to tell us a way forward? So for that statement alone, you know, so they felt that, you know, I was being disrespectful. And I also said, no one knows from the doctors, from the government officials, from ordinary people who knows how to deal with this up to today. No one knows. Yep. Today they're and, telling you it's step one. They're telling you it's step one, we're all going to get it. They're telling you, no, you have to touch something and it stays 10 hours in this, but it can stay in your clothes. Yeah, but the, yeah. you only sanitize your hands and your face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if you're essential work, and if you're essential worker, you are immune to COVID-19. <laughs> Why? I don't know if you guys want to say something before you close. <laughs> Hello? No, yeah. nothing from Wise, eh? <laughs> it's a worry then. So, so yeah, Joe, thank you so nothing much. Nothing from me as well. That's fine, thank you. Right, so, so thank you so much, Joe. Uh, it, was, it was a great pleasure having you around. And, and I tell you, I gotta, I gotta tell you, uh, now that we've had this conversation, and now I'm just talking to you more than I actually realized before this, because there's just, there's just so much of coming together um of, uh, of of ideas and 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 things that were i mean this this stuff has always been there i think in my mind yes. and 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 the, the signs that there the patterns are there um it's all over the news you you look at the news you laugh because 
You can see between the lines. You can see what it is exactly that is happening. And it's just a matter of time, perhaps, that uh, as people get squeezed, maybe, you know, they're going to start realizing what the hell is going on because we're confused. And I, just yesterday I heard that apparently the, 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 the approved, the WHO approved uh, instrument that's used to, 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 to test your COVID positivity is, is, is apparent, it was apparently um, uh, the guy who invented it said, this instrument should not be used to detect any viral infection. <laughs> <laughs> when he created it, but right now it is deployed as a <laughs> as a number one this, official instrument of testing uh, an infectious disease. And you think to yourself, I mean, what the hell is going on? But uh, is, but yeah, <laughs> these are, these are all these are all the things. That, yeah, it's strange. Um, a few days ago, I was um, invited to TRT, the Turkish television channel. Yeah. So. It's interesting that in Turkey, if they found you selling masks, they charge you with treason. Yeah. You can't sell a mask. You, they believe that you can't take a, um, a situation like this. You can't make business out of this. You, you, you either give it for free or the state give it for free. Yeah. So, and, and now you come to Tanzania. So now they ask me that, why is the Tanzanian president said he does not want masks anymore? I said, it's because they're now COVID free. He said he doesn't want it because it's a reminder of basically he believes a mask is for compliance. Than <laughs> it's a sign of compliance. <laughs> it's, a, it's a sign of compliance. So it's, 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 I think some things that we have learned um, during this period is, is that when we're setting up our businesses or whatever that we want to do, it, should this uh, happen again? Are we going to survive? Is, yeah. it, is, is are our businesses essential? Um, can your business last for 20 years? You know. Back in the business school, we were taught that if your business is not going to survive for 20 years, don't do it. Don't, you know? don't bring so, it up. Yeah. But at the same time, but at the same time, we didn't know that masks and sanitizers would be a business. So we would have <laughs> gone for that. You know, the people in con the people the, pe the people in construction are now. You know, if you if if they they overhead you talk about cement on the phone, everyone follows you around. Yeah. The moment you talk about cement, everyone follows you around. If you can make a joke and say, no, oh, I have 10,000 uh, pallets of cement, they will kill you because they want it. It's so bad. So we didn't know all of these things. So it, it, this, this thing has taught us to stay awake, read more, learn more, uh, con uh, have more conversations, especially more uncomfortable conversations. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. anything that has got to do with the truth. I mean, some people will tell you that you are conspiracy theories. Some people will mix it with religion that, no, these things are normal. It's in Revelation in the Bible. I didn't see sanitizers in the, in the Revelation, of course. <laughs> so, but but th these are some of the things that, as long as we are grounded, as long as we understand, some of the things, we were having a conversation like 2018, 2019, and we said there will come a time where our freedom will cost so much. Now you can't buy food without a mask. Oh yeah. You, oh, you know, yeah. if these guys are, are, are willing to go to an extent that you want to spend 10,000 rands of groceries, a mask is five rand, then take your 10,000 rands elsewhere. So you can <laughs> see that the, the world is spinning very fast. The shift is happening and how this is happening be right before your eyes. Yeah, absolutely. Using absolutely. your celebrities as a, as their spokespersons, like your 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 your, your Trevor Noah, like all these other celebrities that would be used <laughs> as the spokesperson for all these guys, because yeah, they're paid they're paid perfect. enough. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Well, John, we have to keep it off here. Yeah? Our hour has come and gone. Uh, thank you very much, and uh, we keep in touch. Thank you, uh, uh, Bali, Zanele, everyone. Everyone has just jumped off the call. I think gradually.
But uh, Joe, we're going to upload this on YouTube. Do you mind at all? Sorry? We're going to upload this on YouTube. Do you mind at all? No, no, no. It's fine. It's fine. Okay. It's fine. Let's do that. In Sorry, fact, and I also, some... can I have access to Joe? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I'll, 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 I don't know, James. I have I... many uh, papers to write. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's fine. In fact, in fact, I wanted to send. Um, there's something that um, this group of professors who work with have started working on since 1971, um, where they analyze the businesses, the financial institutions. It's called the Blue Book. So almost every 10 years, they update it. So you understand the division between the, um, the Rockefellers and the Rothschilds and how they divided the world. And then they will narrow it down to each of the country where you live. If you're in South Africa, you'll start to align some businesses to South Africa. If you're in Asia, you'll start to align it to that. So I can send it to Vincent, and then he can distribute uh, to the guys there as a guide. Also. You can uh, give them our website. And yeah. Almost it, it, today, it was only an hour, and we were we were just talking all over everything. You know, it can we can write a book for the next hundred years with the amount of information that we have. You know that Vincent. It's a yeah, lot of things. Sure. Yeah. But yeah, people yeah. can just access it there if they have questions. If there's questions that I can't answer, my professor is always available to take on and, and on such. Good stuff, great stuff. Thank you so much, Joe. Yeah, right. Good Thank morning. Thank you. Bye -bye. <laughs> Good night. Bye.